Okay, so for starters, um, to have everyone on board parametricity, very bluntly put, um, if we have a variable, or at least a type variable, we can say it's parametric if it's uh, only used for type checking, so it doesn't really influence the computation. And of course, that's a fairly strong thing to know, so if you know that, you get all kinds of well-behavedness theorems for free. Um, and this phenomenon of parametricity is well studied in system F, F omega, Haskell, etc. Uh, but we want to look at it independent type theory. And there, it has been shown by many people that some parametricity results from non-dependent type systems carry over. Um, in the PhD thesis of Guillaume Moulin and the corresponding papers, it is shown that um, this can also be uh, done internally. So dependent type theory is not just a programming language, but also a logic. So um, these three theorems, uh, they can be proven internally. So they're, they're, uh, you can modify dependent type theory so that are proof terms for doing this. But unfortunately, some theorems are also lost, as I will uh, show in a few moments. Um, so what are our results? Uh, we formulate a sound dependent type system, which we called uh, prime DDT. Uh, we carry over the remaining meta theorems, the remaining parametricity theorems meta theoretically. The, the is between quotes because it's a bit of an informal claim, but I think we can make it. And uh, we allow proving additional um, theorems internally, so in the, in the logic of dependent type theory. Um, okay, so parametricity in, in system F, of omega, etc. Um, all type parameters are automatically parametric, so this means they are only used for type checking. They are not inspected. For example, you can't do pattern matching. You can't say if this function is instantiated on the booleans, I'm doing this. If it's instantiated on the naturals, I'm doing that. So you have to, um, you can't inspect the type, so by consequence, you're uh, doing, applying the same algorithm to any type you're instantiating on. And this is simply enforced by the type system, quite simply, because system F just doesn't give you anything to get material from the type level to the value level. Um, for example, if we have a function flatten that takes trees with uh, content of type X to lists, then we know that flatten can't inspect X, so it can't do any computation with the content of the tree, and by consequence, um, if we have some function F from A to B, it doesn't matter whether we first um, reorganize the tree to make it a list and then apply the function to all of the content, or first apply the function to the content and then reorganize the content. So this is irrespective of the implementation of flatten. This is just, I mean, it can do anything. It can contain errors. As long as it's well typed, you know that this diagram is going to commute. Um, one of the original motivations for uh, parametricity is representation independence. So suppose we have two fixed types, A and B, and A is like an, an interface. So it lists a bunch of operations, and um, you make an element of A by implementing each of the operations. Then typically, uh, you don't create elements of A by ad hoc implementing each of the operations. Typically, you'll take some more intentional type X and then prove that if you have an element of X, then you can implement all of the operations using, using that. And so here we have two types. On the left, we have just the function type from A to B. On the right, we have the type of functions from X to B that work for any type X, provided that X implements A. So provided that if you have an element of X, you, get, you, have a, you can map it to A. Um, okay, so. Uh, system F asserts that these types are isomorphic so that the function of, of the right type can only access the content of X through the, the interface A. So how do you prove this? Uh, the map to the right is, is just function composition. The map to the left is just instantiating X with A. A implements itself. Um, the source side equality of this isomorphism is trivial and the target side is the parametricity theorem. So we have to show that if we have a function G of the type on the right, then we can either apply, uh, instantiate G directly on a uh, type X that, rip, that implements A, or we can first map from X to A and then uh, uh, use the G uh, instantiated on A. And so we have to show that this, that this diagram commutes. Um, so this is the same lemma. I have just put some zero indices there because that makes the proof easier. And we'll prove this using relational parametricity, um, which is um, uh, perhaps a, a bizarre proving technique, but it's been proven sound by various people. Um, and the idea is uh, that related things map to related things. So here we have a judgment, which is completely obvious. If I have a type, a function, and an element of the type, I can apply G to all that material and get something in B. Um, now I'm just writing this judgment twice, ind indexed by zeros, indexed by ones, and then parametricity says if I can relate it the input, so everything on the left of the turnstile, then the, the output will also be related. So what does it mean? I need to... Uh, choose some relation bracket x, so I write just rel because my slide is too narrow, but I should really write rel x0, x1. So I need to pick some relation bracket x between x0 and x1. Then I have to prove 
I have to relate little x0 and little x1, so I have to prove that they are related according to bracket x, and I have to prove that r0 and r1 are related to <coughs> bracket x to a. And bracket x to a is, is a relation defined in terms of bracket x using a set of rules that tell you how relations propagate through type firms. And then if I can do all of that, then the conclusion will be that the outputs are related according to bracket b, and again, bracket b is defined using this propagation of relations. And then we have a lemma about this propagation of relations that says, since b is a constant type, it doesn't depend on x, the relation bracket b will in fact be the equality relation. So this is, what the, uh, this is one of the things the identity extension lemma asserts, that the outputs will be, will be equal. Um, so all I have to do, okay, so, so you see on the right an equation, and uh, the upper side of the equation is exactly the left-hand side of the lemma. In the right-hand side, I have to plug in some things, so I'll do that. And now I just have to show that the inputs are in fact related. So I need to choose, I need to pick some relation between x0 and a, but I have this function, so I just take the graph relation of that function, yeah, like this. Then I have to prove that x0 maps to r0, x0, according to r0, this is trivial, and the other relation is also trivial. So this, is, this completes the proof. So this is a proof using relational parametricity. Okay, that's all nice. This is a meta-theoretical scheme for uh, non-dependent type systems. Um, so I can ask two questions. First of all, can we do this for dependent types? And since dependent types is not just a programming language, but a proof system, is there a proof term in dependent type theory corresponding to, to the previous thing? Or can we modify dependent type theory to have this kind of term? Um, and the first question already, to some extent, has a negative answer. Um, so in system F, we have this, uh, this type that I tried, that I proved before is, is isomorphic to the functions from A to B. If we translate this to dependent type theory, so instead of the for all quantifier, we use pi. Pi ranges over any possible domain, so we have to be explicit. We want to range it over the universe, the type of types. So this is just the same type, essentially, in dependent type theory. But in dependent type theory, we erase the boundary between types and kinds. And so we would like this type to be isomorphic to the functions from A to B for any types A and B. In particular, we can say B is the universe. But now we can leak information. We can say, I get some implementation type X, a function to A, an element of X, and I'm returning the implementation type. So I'm returning details about the implementation that I'm using. So this is uh, an information leak. Um, so if you look at existing work, so I have, I have the proof before, and I have, I have a counterexample, how does that how can we reconcile that? Simply because in, uh, in related work, in existing work on parenticity independent type theory, uh, the universe just doesn't satisfy this identity extension lemma that we relied on. Um, and so what our solution or the syntax side of our solution is to uh, keep track of how we use variables to make sure that we can only prove parenticity theorems when they actually hold. Um, so independent type theory, we have this pi quantifier, which I just show is showed is not parametric. So its functions can use their argument as data, and we add to this uh, a parametric uh, function space um, whose, uh, whose elements can only use their arguments for type checking. And this is a simplification, so uh, parametricity is not irrelevant, but I'll keep it this, like this for the presentation, for the sake of the presentation. Um, and then I should mention that both types have the same formation rule, so in particular, uh, you can form the parametric function space using a non-parametric type family B. So this means the type and values have a slightly different context. Um, and then similarly, we have the sigma type from dependent type theory and then an existential type, which is more similar to the one from system F. Okay, so if we want representation independence, then we want to rely on parametricity, so we should be using the parametric quantifier. And then this leak function has become ill-typed because it gets the argument X in pink, because this is a parametric argument and it's trying to return it in black in a non-parametric position, and the type system keeps an eye on you and prevents you from doing these kind of things. Um, okay, so not only uh, does this for all quantifier help us to refute this, this counterexample, also our type system provides uh, tools to actually build proof terms corresponding to parametricity proof. So we have this lemma once again, and I'll now prove it internally, and first I'll introduce some tools that we can, that we can use for this. Um, so first of all, we get a relational interval type. It's not really a type for fairly subtle reasons, but you can think of it as a type. It, con it contains two elements, 0 and 1, but it's not just the Boolean type, because we can think of 0 and 1 as being related. So this concept was introduced by uh, Bernardi, Coquin, and Moulin 
um, and is similar to the concept of the interval used in cubical type theory, where we think of 0 and 1 as isomorphic to get a theory for homotopy type theory. Um, so the type system allows us to construct a graph type. So if we have a function r from x to a, then we get a type family graph r, you can pronounce this, uh, that is indexed by the interval. And so when you apply this type family to 0, so graph r of 0 is the domain, graph r of 1 is the codomain. And since 0 and 1 are related in the interval, um, the images will also be related. So x and a will be related. So this graph r uh, shows from the fact that there is a function that the domain and the codomain of the function are related. So this, is really, this uh, internalizes the graph relation from x to a. And then, um, so this is a bit of an unusual diagram. So the middle row depends on i. And when i becomes 0, it reduces to the top row. When i becomes 1, it reduces to the bottom row. And so you have uh, on the left, you have x, which is just always x. On the right, you have a, which is always a. And then in the middle, you have this graph type, which ranges from, from x to a. And so uh, what the type system also allows us to do is to factor this function r over the graph. So we have functions push and pull. And as i becomes 0, this push function gets sandwiched to the identity. If i becomes 1, the pull, functions, pull function becomes the identity. In the other case, the h becomes r. So now we can use these tools to prove our lemma. Um, OK, so we have to prove an equality in, in the type b. And what we'll do is we'll create a parametric function from this relational interval to b. And in the semantics of our type system, uh, the Parametric functions are precisely those that map related values to equal values. So since 0 and 1 are related and p is parametric, we will know that p0 and p1 will be equal. This is kind of our reformulation of the identity extension lemma. It's not entirely clear that it's the same, um, but it gives us the same results. Um, OK, and so what we'll do, we'll make sure that p0 is the left-hand side of the equation we want to prove, p1 is the right-hand side of the equation we want to prove, and then we just have to make sure that this pi actually exists in general. So first, we need a type that ranges from x to a. There we take the graph type. We need a function that varies from r to the identity. We take this pool function. And then we need a function that uh, varies from the identity to r. So we take this push function and we apply it to x. So this is a proof term that proves the um, parametricity theorem. So this is like a free proof term because you can use these strange tools to build it. Um, yeah. So. OK, so what are the contributions of our work? Um, so we have this type system param DTT, which contains the non-parametric quantifiers from dependent type theory and non-parametric quantifiers, which are more like the ones from system F. We prove soundness of our type system using um, a pre-sheaf model. Uh, it uses labeled cubicle sets. And cubicle sets are, in a way, iterated reflexive graphs. So this builds further on existing parametricity models. And we extend AGDA with uh, support for this type system. Um, the results are we get a stronger parametricity system. And maybe I shouldn't have used the word stronger because we get some new features, but we also lose some with respect to the work of Guillaume Moulin. In particular, um, our system is not fully iterated, which means that the parametricity operators that I used to build this free proof um, cannot be applied to themselves in every imaginable way. So that is something that is not entirely as, as we would like it to be, but I'm pretty optimistic that this can be remedied. Um, we show internally that church encoding uh, of data and codata works up to predicativity issues because church encoding relies on impredictivity and we are working in a predicative dependent type system. And uh, we support size types. So size types is a, I mean, you'll hear more about this in a, mo in a moment from Andreas Abel, um, but it's a modular type directed approach to termination checking, and it inherently re relies on um, parametric quanti dependent quantification on uh, data, so on natural numbers or ordinal numbers. So this is a perfect match with our type system, and we can support this. Um, so thank you for your attention. I have time left, magically. Um, I want to advertise some related talks. So one is up next, so there's no way you can escape it. And the other one <laughs> is, uh, is at 1 o'clock at FSCD uh, about a general framework for, for this kind of modality, such as parametricity. So I'm not looking forward to that in any way. Um, and then I'm happy to answer your questions. <laughs>